Hi everyone, we wanted to provide another update here. We have some new information. This is issued September 18th, 2020. The drought conditions across the West continue to worsen as much of the West had a very weak monsoon and very warm conditions. So we have expanded D0 and D1, especially in the Southwest, including Southern California. The storm track that started the dry period is shown also on here from winter 2019-2020. This is Alex Tardy, Meteorologist, National Weather Service. Some of the extremes we've seen over the past several years are listed here. We now can add August 2020 as the hottest August on record for California. And for our area, San Bernardino and Riverside County both came in first place as hottest. We've seen some extreme events and they include uh, heavy rainfall and they include drought as well. And we've also seen some periods of very intense heat. And really one of our hottest summers was 2018, just a couple years ago, as shown on here. So what went on over 2019 to 2020? Well, the pattern really started in way back in January 2019, but as shown here, upper level high pressure was just dominant during that period. And it really continued all the way through this summer. This very amplified weather pattern, uh, shifting storms well to the north, and then a few of those storms diving over the upper level high pressure. Upper level is the key and then going across Southern California. And this really had an impact on our monsoon too, because it kept most of the moisture, if not all the moisture, except for one week to our east. Speaking of summer 2020, this is how the weather pattern has been dominant over our region. That same upper level high pressure has not gone anywhere. Big dome of hot air over the Pacific Ocean, warming the waters there, driving storms to the north. But it's also caused a weaker high pressure system uh, over the desert southwest, but weak is all relative. The high pressure system's been there. We've had 11 different heat waves, but the key is the heat waves have been mostly dry with a lack of monsoon. So that's really allowed our temperatures to soar into record territory in our mountains and deserts across the southwest this summer 2020. So speaking of the monsoon, it was record dry across much of the Southwest as shown here. Very little precipitation. We did have a few storms in mid-August that affected the Big Bear area, which does show up. It was also record hot across California and especially the desert Southwest with the lack of the monsoon contributing to that. Speaking of, here's the precipitation and you can see the desert region all the way through the Coachella Valley and some of our mountains and deserts ended up being the driest period from June through August on record. And that extended across the Colorado River Valley, which typically does benefit a lot from the monsoon. Temperature wise, it was record warmest as shown here for the month of August. That extended all through much of California and all of Arizona, Utah, and then into Southern California shown here. So record warmest August on our record. Here's a chart showing July and August combined together for 2020. And it ended up being third warmest on record. You can see 2018 shows up that I just talked about and also 2017. So definitely a strong trend over the past few years, landing the state in the warmest July, August periods. Now for August alone, you can see all of California shows up here as the warmest on record, certainly contributing to the fact um, that conditions have really dried out and fires have really thrived. Here's a map of California for August 2020, showing the areas that were most affected by extreme temperatures and record warmth. You can see the deserts weren't just hot because it was summer and deserts. They were much above average and they were record warmest. That includes San Bernardino, Riverside, down to Imperial, as shown here. Fuel moistures, as I mentioned, have been a big contributing factor to some of the explosive fire growth that we have seen. 
And it's not just because we had summer. It's not just because we came through the dry season, but fuel moisture, as shown here in our mountain areas where most of the fuel is, are below the red line. So they've never been observed before. They are below average and they are below the record low for August and September as shown here. We've really seen some extreme years lately um, and we can't contribute this just to El Nino or La Nina. We saw a La Nina and El Nino year on the left-hand side that were both very wet, largely beneficial, but some flooding in Southern California. Then we saw just a couple years ago, uh, our driest year on record, tied with the driest year on record 2017-18, and that was a La Nina. So we've seen extreme years, but we can't contribute it just to El Nino or La Nina. That's very important to consider. Speaking of La Nina, it is beginning to form as shown here. So waters are cooling quite a bit across the equatorial Pacific Ocean as seen here in the blue shade. However, across most of the Pacific, we see massive areas of above average or much warmer than it should be water. And we can attribute a lot of that to that upper level high pressure pattern that has been very persistent over the past year to almost two years across the Pacific and really been driving our weather pattern, not just this summer, but during the winter, a very amplified weather pattern allowing the ocean to warm up extensively. La Nina pattern looks like this. And since we see a La Nina forming and expect it to continue into the fall, typically we see a very variable jet stream, a continuation of the amplified jet stream going way up to the north and then coming down across the Pacific Northwest. So for us in Southern California, it's a very difficult weather pattern because it's unpredictable. It's almost all or nothing. And that's probably why we've seen some wet La Nina years and some very dry La Nina years. We're already in a semi-arid climate on the edge of the normal jet stream shown in red. La Nina makes that more amplified, more extreme, more variable, um, and definitely harder to predict in a long range forecast. If you look back at all the La Ninas, they are a mixed bag. Uh, they tend to have an indication of dryness across Southern California, Texas, and Florida, but as shown earlier, they can be variable, all or nothing, a very amplified pattern. So you just get one or two storms that come down from the north or, or one storm or two storms that taps into atmospheric river, like we saw in 2010, can make a big difference. But overall, the big picture is that the Pacific Northwest tends to be much wetter and wetter than usual. The official outlook also calls for that. So it is expected that in October, that the Pacific Northwest will start becoming active and not just active, but above normal active potential with the jet stream up there. Unfortunately for us in Southern California, we're on the edge of that storm track and it remains that it looks to be warmer than average continuing through October and potentially uh, very little rainfall or even drier than average. Now, typically October is not a wet month for our region, so keep that in mind. Okay, this is also why we updated this presentation. This is the latest outlook that takes us from October into December or the early part of the winter. And unfortunately, it's calling for drier than normal conditions. And once we get into November, December, that is normally a wet, a quick jump to wet conditions here, even in Southern California on average. So drier than normal conditions could mean a dry fall and a late start to our rainy season. While the Pacific Northwest looks to be confidence of being above average, not just normal, but above average precipitation with an active storm track up there. And then also because of the jet stream being well far to the north as we get into November, December, it looks like above average temperatures, not only in October, but could continue through the whole period through November at the very least for Southern California as shown here. So drier conditions for the first part of the winter, a late start for the winter potentially and warmer than average conditions.
So what does this all mean? Here's the summary. Uh, August was very dry. Fuel moisture is at record low levels. We had a very late and limited monsoon. August 2020, hottest on record for California and especially some of our local deserts here. September had a historical heat wave in Southern California. All-time highs were reached. We're talking uh, a wet 2019-20 and a very wet April, but unfortunately now live fuels that flourished from that rainfall are now critically dry and dead fuels are now at record low, record low. We had 11 different heat waves in Southern California. That speaks for itself. The period ended up much above average, uh, if not record for August in San Bernardino and Riverside County. We've also seen record sea surface temperatures. Those really started in May, back in May, uh, but they also were record levels in August. California suffered from uh, an impressive lightning episode from tropical moisture that came up from the south in mid-August and never went anywhere. And a weak weather disturbance allowed numerous hundreds of thunderstorms to form along that boundary. California is now in the midst of the largest wildfire season. Acres burned. It is over 3 million acres that started for summer 2020 and continue. The outlook predicts warmer than average conditions. So that is the stress on fire weather conditions as we go into October and the early winter. There's really no indications of significant precipitation for our part of the world. In fact, the uh, indications are drier than average and warmer than average conditions going into the early part of the winter. We are entering a La Nina. Uh, we did show graphs that La Ninas are extremely variable in terms of precipitation and weather across Southern California. So there's no sure bet that a La Nina will bring dry or wet conditions, though they tend to be on the dry side. This is the latest outlook from the National Weather Service and NOAA Climate Prediction Center. Thanks for tuning in to this briefing.